It's impossible to ignore the parallels between being in the desert and driving a race car. The feeling of isolation, you're having total control over every aspect of the experience, and if something goes wrong, there's nothing there to save you. Indy Motorsports Park is certainly remote enough out in the Arizona desert. The front straight doubles as a runway, so it's long, wide, and forgiving. The rest of the two-mile circuit is bumpy, dusty, tight, and blind. And the AVI Racing Corvette GT1 is probably the fastest track car I've ever driven. Or if not, it's certainly the loudest. In-car audio, not so much. AVI's Wayne McKean, after putting tens of thousands into a C6 Corvette Z06 to go racing, had a revelation. If you want to build a Corvette for the track, why start with a Corvette that's meant for the street? That's like buying a casino when all you needed was a card table. I love Corvettes. The geometry and the engineering that's went into the Corvette for a track car is unbelievable. And we needed a stiff chassis to complement the geometry of the Corvette. This car is a uh, tube frame GT1 Corvette race car, uh, essentially a Corvette stock car with a completely rebuilt, redesigned uh, tube frame chassis that's extremely stiff. The body of this car is made out of, uh, this current car is made out of fiberglass. The production cars will be out of uh, carbon fiber and Kevlar as an option, which saves about 80 pounds to the weight of the whole vehicle. And the chassis itself, dry weight, is about 2330, the way it sits. So getting a stock Z06 down, you know, under 3,000 pounds for a race car is extremely tough. So we wanted to also widen the track width of this car. This car is eight inches wider than a, a C6 Corvette. So the track width and the, the turn in and everything is so much better. designed the way it is for three specific reasons. To be as fast as possible, as light as possible, and as simple as possible to fix, because you go to the track to drive, not to wrench. ABI Racing's mission was to develop a race car that was user-friendly, extremely reliable, and easy to work on. Removing the complete carbon and fiberglass bodywork takes two men only six minutes, revealing a skeleton that is more NASCAR than Woodward Avenue. A tube frame chassis with every bit of racing technology you would ever need lurks underneath. There's an adjustable brake bias with two master cylinders powering 14-inch Brembo brakes. There's a 28-gallon fuel cell, beefed up FOT suspension, and a triple disc clutch. It has modular front and rear frame components, which means if you crash, you can replace the entire front or rear section for less than five figures in your own garage. Thanks to the ease of access, one man can change a clutch or a transmission in under an hour. There's ducting, cooling, tons of downforce, and massive square stance 305 section slick tires. Most people think of a race car as a, a Rolex or a World Challenge 250, 300,000-hour race car. We wanted to develop a track day car for $60,000, a fraction of the money, that will compete with those cars. And Wayne should know, he benchmarked the GT1 against his LG Motorsports World Challenge car. And without the restrictions World Challenge cars face, the GT1 is faster much faster. We've taken our years of race car experience and developed an extremely fast, reliable, affordable race car that will compete with the top cars out in a track day. It's extremely nimble, it tracks really well corners extremely well. It's so stiff that it corners 
like no other car. Under the hood, you won't just see a 505 horsepower LS3 engine, but a complete C6 Corvette driveline, including the cradles, which is not only effective at getting the power to the ground, but also robust with parts available in nearly every city in the United States. The driveline in this car, as well as all the suspension components, can be bought at your local GM Performance Parts dealer, including the transmission, the diff, the engine itself is all available at GM Performance Parts. So it's very easy to, you know, if something happens or breaks, um, to get new parts. They're not custom, except for the chassis itself. It's every bit as exciting as it looks stepping into this thing. It's visceral to the point of nirvana. It's fast, grippy, responsive, and has the best turn-in of any car I've ever driven. It's wonderful, rewarding you when you get it just right, and kicking you in the ass when you overcook it. I stayed out lap after lap, pushing the car as hard as I could, until I realized I was having so much fun, I ran out of gas. While it's important to remember this car is a prototype, the production cars will be reaching customer hands at the beginning of next year, and I can't wait to drive one of those. Now that we found out how well it grips on the track, let's see what happens when you try and break it loose. I got no gas pedal. Got no gas pedal here. I somehow snapped the throttle cable, and we didn't have time to repair it. was an experience. The people at AVI Racing are true professionals who brought us a great race car. And because it's Arizona, of course, somebody brought a Mac 10. That's why I like shooting in Arizona. The crew all brings guns. Woo! Is this thing shooting huge flames out of the barrel, or is it just me? <laughs> Damn! <laughs> back. You gotta lean Clear. <laughs> Bleach on the ground, soap on the tire. Rental minivan burnout. Yeah. Let's bleach and soap combo, man. We're